My first word of thanks goes to the ambassador for so many terrific extensions of her hospitality in Washington, for the superb job she's done representing her country in the United States, and for giving me all those visas. <laughs> I think one of the reasons that I'm so pleased to be here tonight is that it gives me a chance to say to all of you in this room, and I say this as somebody who has never been to one of these dinners before, that you don't have to be Indian and you don't have to be an NRI to be a fan of India abroad. <laughs> and Aziz, that's in no small measure something I say because of you. <laughs> Aziz Hanifa is a superb and relentless practitioner of the only profession that I ever actually chose. All the other ones kind of uh, chose me. And I must say that uh, as a newcomer to this event, I have found these proceedings to be not only wonderfully organized and inspiring and fun, but also moving and educational. For example, uh, I have learned a lot tonight. In fact, I've already forgotten some of what I've learned. <laughs> For example, the word that got Anamika her prize, I can't even remember what it was, much less how to spell it, much less uh, what it means, much less how to use it in a sentence. But this is uh, just a terrific event. With regard to my own connection with this superb culture, it's so much more than a country that we're celebrating tonight. And by the way, to those who are responsible for India Abroad, my only suggestion would be that at some point along the way you change the name of the publication and call it India at Home Everywhere. <laughs> I'm going to just pick out one year in my life and try to explain why India has come to mean so much to me. And that year was 1968, and it was doubly significant for me. Most significant, perhaps, was that there was a young woman, an American, who believed in America abroad. She took part in a program called the Experiment in International Living, and she spent much of the year 1968, living in India and being taken in by an Indian family. And that family became her family. And since she became my wife subsequently, that is my family. And pretty much everybody else who's been up here to the podium has been able to acknowledge their family who are here tonight. And I'm able to do that too. Nayan and Atish and Shide, uh, Chanda, are all my family. Uh, because Nayan is, in effect, my Indian brother-in-law. And his wife, Gita, would be here if she were not back in Delhi at 179 Golf Links Road, where I wrote a lot of love letters to that 18-year-old girl back in 1968. Uh, and that uh, she's back there because she's taking care of my Indian mother-in-law. So I feel that this is a family event, as do so many of the rest of you. 1968 was important in another respect, too, for me, because that's the year that I fetched up at Oxford University with a scruffy Arkansan by the name of Bill Clinton and became a friend of his. Uh, only decades later to be known as a FOB or a friend of Bill's. <laughs> and it was because of that friendship that whatever it was, 26 years later, I had a chance to travel to New Delhi and represent President Clinton in some very important dealings with Prime Minister Rao and Finance Minister Manmohan Singh. And not too long after that, I guess about five years later, I was back again uh, dealing with uh, my friend, uh, Jaswant Singh, uh, whom you just saw on the screen. So the moral of that story is that if you get to be an FOB 
you have some chance of eventually becoming an FOI. And I'm very proud to be certified as such tonight. So thank you very much.